karibu tusome na taasisi ya elimu Tanzania. How are you from Four Student? Today let us talk about welfare association. Social and welfare associations are social groups, associations formed by Africans to meet the immediate needs of members by protesting colonial exploitations, oppressions, and humiliations. They played an important role of providing political education to African communities by showing the evil of colonialism and the need to liberate themselves. There were different forms of social welfare associations as discussed below. 1. Workers' associations or trade unions. These were formed by workers to address their grievances such as low education, low wages, poor health facilities, lack of representatives in local council and discrimination at working places. Example of workers' associations. Tanganyika Territory Civil Servant Association, TTCSA, formed in 1922 in Tanga by Martin Kayamba. African Association 1929 which became TAA 1948 Kenya Young Kavirondo Association formed by students led by their teacher Jonathan Okwir This demanded abolition of kipande system decrease hut and poll tax exclude women in taxation and eliminate forced labor Kikuyu Central Association formed in 1924 by Joseph Kagethe It demands where to end land alienation and discrimination to allow africans to grow cotton and coffee it condemned missionary church which prevents female circumcision in 1928 jomo kenyatta became its secretary 2 tribal associations these were ethnic organizations formed by the members of the certain tribe to address specific grievances in tribe such as poor health education and absence of representative in a local council 3 peasant cooperatives these were formed by farmers to air their grievances example low price for their crops for instance kilimanjaro native planters association formed by joseph merinyo in 1925 bukoba cooperative union of 1924 under clemens kiza The Usambara Native Growers Association of 1931, Ngaka Coffee Society in Umatengo of 1934, Kikuyu Association, the Young Buganda Association founded in 1920. Kenyan nationalism was dominated by the rise of political parties and the emergence of Mau Mau freedom fighters. One, the skilled and unskilled workers. These comprises of elites both skilled and unskilled workers who lived in the poor houses and had no sufficient health and education services compared to Asians and Europeans. They demanded better terms of services, equal provisions of wages and salaries to workers of the same qualifications regardless of their race differences. 2. African traders These were petty traders in urban areas who were addressing their grievances including discrimination as African traders were discriminated while Asians and European traders were favored much by the colonial governments through the provision of loans and other facilities. 3. Peasants and cooperative societies. These were peasant cooperative unions aiming at defending the needs of the farmers since the colonial government confiscated their land and offered it to the white settlers while Africans possessed little land landless and forced them to live in unfertile land. Example of these associations were Kilimanjaro Native Planters Association of Tanganyika and Ukamba Members Association of Kenya. The reasons for the rise of social and welfare associations. 1. The influence of ex-soldiers from the First and Second World Wars. These were Africans who were recruited by colonial governments to fight on their sides abroad. These countries like Burma, Sri Lanka, and other parts of the world. They created awareness to Africans about the importance of welfare association in the process of nationalism struggle. 2. The role of African elites, especially those trained by the colonialists for the aim of assisting colonial administration in various fields like cracks teachers nurses among others 
They mobilized their fellow workers to form social organizations within their working areas, demanding good living and working conditions for workers as well as better salaries and wages, as well as the same benefits regardless their race differences. 3. The increase of exploitation of human resources and natural resources. The world wars left European countries with economic difficulties. As a result, they decided to come to Africa to compensate their economic loss by exploiting African resources through the land alienation, forced labor, taxation and payment of low wages. This situation led the Africans to rise social and welfare associations to protest the colonial exploitations. 3. Awareness of civilized urban dwellers on colonial evils. Most Africans who settled in urban centers saw the need to establish welfare associations, especially among the people who originated from the same region or clans. They later on provided such awareness to African village dwellers who joined hands by supporting the establishment of social and welfare associations. Student, These social and welfare associations were formed to remove 1. Colonial exploitation 2. Colonial discrimination 3. Poor working conditions 4. Low payment forced labor and 5. Land alienation Let us now move to the weakness or problems of social and welfare associations. 1. It was based on small groups organization, like tribal or class. As a result, it was very difficult for their grievances to be fulfilled by the colonial governments, for they could not mobilize most of their countrymen. 2. Frustration and fear among members. Due to the colonial government harassment to members and leaders of the social welfare associations, following this situation, the members and leaders of the associations failed to stand firm for the interest of their associations. For example, the Hari Thuku of Kikuyu Central Association in Kenya was softened his stand against the colonial government after being exiled. 3. Financial problems Most of the social and welfare associations faced the problem of inadequate funds. This was due to the fact that they were depending on income from their members' subscriptions to meet their needs. Yet, their members earned low income, and at the same time, they had other obligations like tax payment and daily life needs. As a result, they contributed a small amount in our association, something that resulted to financial problems. Number 4. Inadequate knowledge and skills of leaders in managements. Many leaders of social and welfare association had little knowledge and skills of managing offices and leading people. This created difficulties in the organization and mobilization of members within the given association. Number 5. Banning of social and welfare associations by colonial governments. This was due to the fact that these associations were against colonial governments and administration. That is why colonial government decided to ban them in order to abolish them. The situation made Africans to experience difficulties in organizing their associations. Dear student, apart from the weaknesses of social welfare, let us discuss the strength and contribution of social and welfare associations during the struggle for African independence. Establishment of infrastructures, such as offices, come to be used by the nationalist leaders during the struggle of independence. Preparation of nationalist leader. These associations prepare African nationalist leaders who were members of association through the providing political awareness that made them to stand firm in struggling for African liberation. For example, Jomo Kenyatta was a member of Kikuyu Central Association who later on organized Kenyans to fight for their liberation. They provided awareness among the Africans on the evil of colonial governments. Through these associations, many Africans, especially the members of the associations, awakened on the injustice of colonialism. For example, in Kenya, the Okambani were experiencing demonstrations due to the increase of awareness. Journal publications. Some social and welfare associations published their journals which carried out various political agenda and communicated with their members on different issues of their concern. Generally, 
They organized meetings which came to be a forum of airing their own grievances to the colonial rule. Furthermore, they created a base on which the true nationalism activities stood. <laughs> Student, now let us discuss the rise and protest of religious movements, independent churches. Firstly, protest can be referred as a reaction against those who mistreat or humiliate others, indicating that their treatment cannot be taken anymore. Protest can be divided into two, which are active and passive protest. Active protest, these involve physical reactions such as fighting or striking. Passive protest, these involve silent reactions such as boycotts. These were churches which were made by Africans out of the churches formed by the missionaries. They opposed European churches' leaders who discriminated African church leadership and despised African customs like polygamy and female circumcision. They also opposed land alienation, forced labor, involvement of Africans in European wars. Example of independence churches were Kikuyu Independent Church formed in 1929 by David Maina in Kenya, Religion of Spirit Dini Yamasambwa formed by Alija Masinde which opposed colonialism and foreign religion in Kenya, Watchtower Church and African National Church, Tanzania, Province Industrial Mission Church formed by John Chilembwe in Malawi. Student, apart from that, now let us discuss about the causes of the rise of the protest and religion movements. 1. Church Segregation The European churches preached the salvation and equality of human beings before God, while Africans were segregated, oppressed, and not allowed even to lead prayers. They were taken as third citizens. 2 the assistance of missionaries to colonizers. The European churches also involved in helping colonizers in land alienation, forced labor, taxation, and administration, which had no any relationship with the teaching of the Bible. 3. Africans realized that the European churches and colonialism were the two sides of the same coin, that the Christian missionaries were only to pave the way for colonization process of Africa as many of them acquired labor farms and exploited Africans just like the white settlers. 4. Missionaries advised Africans concerning political and economic problems by breaking their resistance. For example, through preaching biblical doctrines like humble people are blessed for them will enter the kingdom of God forgive those who wrong you. 5. Missionaries intervene in African culture like girls' circumcision among the Kikuyu people in Kenya, who vehemently detested the missionaries' activities that prompt them to start independent schools and began to spread. 6. The Africans show disapproval of missionaries' education system. They consider it inadequate as it only taught Africans reading, writing, and arithmetics. Three errors. This enabled Africans to occupy low positions in colonial administration like cracks and wound dressers in the colonial government's hospital. 7. The Africans wanted to counterattack the colonial exploitation and domination independent church campaigned against the payment of taxes by African, racial discrimination, and equal provision of social services and forced labor. Let us move to the weaknesses or problem faced the religious movement during the struggle for independence. 1. Financial problems. The independence churches experienced inadequate funds because of depending on the little money rose from the few members of the churches that could not sustain most of their needs. For example, the churches needed funds to support a large number of pupils expelled from mission schools in Kenya during the female during the female circumcision controversy of the 1920s and 1930s. Conflict among church leaders. Within independent churches, there were several church leadership conflicts emerged among the church founders since everyone demanded leadership recognition in the church. 
Competition between independent churches and the white missionary churches for followers following the white men missionaries influenced many Africans to be converted into their churches by all means, including provision of gifts like clothes and shoes for the aim of preventing African independent churches from getting followers. Another factor is lack of enough trained personnel. As most of teachers and independent churches were untrained since most of them were ex-missionary school students, with a little worse than education and management skills. Let us now shift to the strength and contribution of protest and religion movements during the struggle for independence. One. Establishment of African independent schools. These schools enroll African's children only, and they are told their culture and evils of colonialism. As a result, later on, they become political activists. 2. Provision of reformism education. By teaching the Africans that missionaries were mere agents of colonialism and practicing discrimination in the church and its hierarchy, following these missionaries was not fully evangelical as they preached, thus reforms were inevitable. 3. The increase of awareness among the Africans. Due to the various protests including active demonstrations, boycotts and strikes especially when colonial governments use force to avoid protests, for example, the religious protests in Nyasaland under Chilemwe when surprise made the movements to be popular. And 4. The religious movement and churches instructed Africans not to pay tax and not to be involved in the imperialist wars because Africans were not beneficiaries of these. So, dear students, we have reached to the end of our lesson today. Until next time, I say bye bye. study.